five, three billion years ago. This one professor was getting very angry. <clears throat> I seem to do that to them. <clears throat> he said, Mr. Hoven, do you realize there are nearly 400 varieties of dogs in the world today? I said, sir, I have no idea how many, but 400 sounds good. He said, do you mean to tell me that you believe all those dogs came from two dogs on Noah's Ark? You want me to believe that? I said, sir, uh, would you look at what you're teaching your students? You're teaching your students that all those dogs came from a rock. <laughs> he didn't have any more questions after that. <laughs> Bus for 17 years and taught junior church for 17 years. And, um, there were 300 first graders in this room, I'm speaking, and I got my dinosaurs out and I said, boys and girls, I got a question for you. When did dinosaurs live? I mean, instantly, all of them shouted out, millions of years ago. I thought, now wait a minute, these kids are in first grade, okay, they can barely read. How do they believe that already? California, 1925, this critter washed up on the beach. That's the head, here's the neck going down to the right. Just the neck was 20 feet long. What, everybody that examined it said it was a plesiosaurus. 20 foot neck. One atheist wrote me a letter and said, Hovind, you're so stupid. He said, don't you know that was a whale? I said, now just exactly where is the neck on a whale? <laughs> Ought to be between the head and the flippers. Hmm. He said, it's a rare form of Bard's beaked whale. Oh, it's pretty rare, right, with a 20-foot neck. Duh. The people who saw it said it's a plesiosaurus. Why is that so hard to believe? You know why people resist explanations like that? It goes against their theory. Water, the neck is over on the far right. Then Reader's Digest, of course, they crop everything down. They cut the neck off when they publish their picture, the crop picture. But Mark McLeod said he watched it for nine minutes through binoculars and made four sketches of it, of what he saw. McLeod said, I think the monster looks like this. <clears throat> All you got to do is, you know, watch TV programs once in a while where they talk about the Loch Ness Monster. There are thousands of people who will go on record and say, I have seen it. And that's it with its mouth open. <clears throat> we can go all day about Loch Ness Monster, but they said this photograph was a fake, and it probably was, but I don't know. It's interesting, they waited till the last guy involved died to announce it's a fake. Oh, crocodiles, they never get past about 17 feet. Oh, I don't think that's correct. Earlier in the, the summer of uh, 2005, they killed a 24-foot crocodile in that swamp. Of course, the natives will say, oh, you should see the big ones. The natives also talk about an animal they call Mokale Umbembe. Mokale Umbembe? What on earth is that? Well, if you show them the picture of an apatosaurus, they'll say, yep, yep, that's it, Mokale Umbembe. The natives claim these animals live underwater. They're very rare. Of course, they're in the swamp in Africa, and there's, nobody goes out at night anyway, and there's no lights over there at night. But the animals are seen mostly early, early morning or late in the evening when they come out, and their favorite plant is the Malombo plant. Here's Dr. Mackle holding a Malombo plant. Dr. Mackle was a University of Chicago microbiology professor, and he went over there and studied this carefully and came back and wrote a book called A Living Dinosaur. Now, he believes in evolution, but his book is great about the evidence for dinosaurs still living in African swamp. They found footprints of the creatures. A missionary friend of mine was there for 43 years as a missionary, Eugene Thomas. He's in Ohio now. Here's his phone number. Call him up. He was there for 43 years. He said, I had two pygmies in my church. It killed one and ate it. Dinosaurs. Gomato. If you're in uh, Congo, in, Bat in Kenya, they call it Batamzinga. Uh, Steve Romani was, Romandi was on the Kenya Olympic running team. He called me and said, he was going to school in uh, Louisiana. He said, Mr. Hovind, I saw those creatures. He said, we've got them in my village in Kenya. He said, their favorite food is decaying human flesh. They dig up graves and eat the bodies. Papua New Guinea, it lives on the island right there. So, what's the point? You say, Brother Hovind, who cares? Yeah, I think there might be some dinosaurs still alive. And I think we have really been lied to about the dinosaurs. Now, I don't think there's many, and it's probably safe to go to the dorm, okay? Don't get excited and think, wow, we're going to get eaten by a dinosaur. A big game hunter named uh, <clears throat> Mr. Gobbler returned from a trip to Angola. He announced to the Cape Town newspaper, the Cape Argus, that there was an animal of large dimensions, the description of which could only fit a dinosaur. The natives call it Chippequi. For years in Kenya, he said he and his wife saw one of these creatures, but the plates on the back were bigger, more like a stegosaurus. 
down in South America. They've got the Amazon jungle, which is huge. In 1907, the British Army sent Colonel Fawcett to mark the boundary between Brazil and Peru. He was an officer in the Royal Engineers and was known as a order, as recorder of, meticulous recorder of facts. In the Benny swamps, he said he saw what he believed to be a diplodocus. The natives and the tribes around there said, oh yeah, that animal still lives out here in the swamp. Colonel Fawcett's son made sketches of the footprints. In 1883, uh, Scientific American ran this article before they got committed to evolution. An article like this would never make it in Scientific American today because now they're dedicated to preserving the theory. It was killed several years ago, 35-foot snake. It had eaten a man who fell asleep on the job. <laughs> Stay awake on the job, fellas, okay? This snake was reported in Indonesia being 49 feet long. I don't know if it's true or not, but I mean, they might, people might have exaggerated, but that's the reports of a giant snake down there. Colonel Fawcett said, said he killed a 62-foot anaconda snake. And the natives were terrified. They said, Colonel, if there's one, there's going to be another one. The ancient recipes call for dragon blood, dragon bones, dragon saliva. Why? Gilgamesh is famous for slaying a dragon. A Chinese legend tells about a guy named Yu that surveyed the land of China, drive off the dragons, and then build your city. I mean, it was expected. You've got to drive the dragons off. Okay? Why would the Chinese calendar have 11 real animals, you know, the pig, the duck, the dog, and a dragon? Why would they put a mythical animal in there? Could it be that at the time they came up with these 12 symbols, there were 12 real animals? Hmm? Alexander the Great said his soldiers were scared by dragons when they conquered part of India in 300 BC. This Roman mosaic shows two long-necked dragons fighting, or kissing. Now that would be necking. Wow. Anyway, <clears throat> how, did, how did the Romans know about dragons in 200 AD? St. George is famous for slaying a dragon in 275 A.D. Beowulf slew two dragons and the third one killed him. You should try to read the Beowulf story in Old English. Good luck. That's English. 1,500 years ago, that was English. I can only read one word on the page. It says, duh. <laughs> but anyway, when they translate the story to modern English, the story tells us Beowulf killed Grendel the dragon by pulling off one of its arms and the creature bled to death pulled off his arm. Well, they found a Babylonian cylinder seal showing a guy pulling the arm off a dragon. Interesting. Get the book After the Flood if you want a whole lot more on dragons living with man. But there's a city in France that's famous because a dragon came up out of the water and a guy killed it and cut the head off and stuck it over the corner of the building. The head of the dragon was mounted on his building. They called it the gargoyle. How many of you have ever heard of the gargoyle? They still do that today. You can buy these ugly little critters, you put them on your building or whatever over your door. 500, I believe, show dinosaurs. Why would they have dinosaurs and humans on the same stones? Well, because people lived with uh, dinosaurs. Anyway, there's plenty on that. Here's one from our museum. Shows a dinosaur holding a guy by the head. This one we've got shows what appears to be a guy cutting the head off the dragon because the dragon killed his friend. You can see the friend's body is inside, but his. why would they put circles on the side of the dinosaurs? Well, nobody ever found dinosaur skin until about 20 years ago when fossilized dinosaur skin was found. It's very interesting, the dinosaur skin has circle patterns on it. They had to see a live one to know to put that on the stones, because you couldn't tell that from the bones. We've got some dinosaur skin in our museum in Pensacola. Recently, they just found uh, uh, unfossilized soft dinosaur tissue. Soft dinosaur tissue? So now the brilliant scientists are trying to figure out how could tissue stay soft for 70 million years? The thought will never cross their brain to question that maybe it's not 70 million years old. I mean, that thought will never enter their head, okay? This guy's cutting the head off a dragon. There's a guy riding one. We've got a ton of information on dinosaurs living with man. Sometimes they're in friendly gestures, like this one's petting him. He's got his head laying on his shoulder, okay? Pottery was found with dinosaurs on it. A mummy was found in a tomb wrapped in a blanket, and all around the blanket were dinosaurs. Why would they put dinosaurs on their blankets? Why would they put them on their pottery? Why would they carve them on cliff walls? Why would they put them on their waistbands? In Alcumbro, Mexico, 56,000 ceramic figurines of dinosaurs were found. They knew about them in central Mexico. 
They have always lived with man. They did not live millions of years ago. But everybody today is saying dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Nobody's ever seen one. Yeah, I think they have, okay?